G'day, and welcome to AOS Coach. In this video, I'm gonna look at terrain in third edition Age of Sigma and the mysterious terrain rules that will be in effect. I'm gonna share some thoughts on how you might wanna make the most of the abilities both in your deployment and in game. A game of Age of Sigma isn't complete without a battlefield full of interesting terrain. Terrain helps immerse yourself into the mortal realms by providing you with tactical challenges as you maneuver your units across the landscapes while fighting over the objectives, while also providing you advantages and disadvantages like tall buildings, like obstacles, places for your heroes to hide, etc, etc. In a traditional match play battle, you can expect approximately eight pieces of terrain on the table, all randomly rolled up using the mysterious terrain rules that you can find in your core rulebook in 28.13. Now this is going to exclude your faction terrain should you have an army that comes with a terrain piece like the Corn Skull Altar, the Beast of Chaos Herdstone, the Gloom Spike Gets Loon Shrine, they already come with rules so you don't use mysterious terrain on those faction terrain. And you'll find that the table, like the example here on the screen, will vary and depend depending on how big or small the terrain pieces are. You might find five or six are enough for your table. You might find you have a lot of small pieces and maybe 10 or 12 is better. But traditionally, you have about eight pieces of terrain. Now, terrain forms one of the first decision points as a player. And when I arrive at a table, it's one of the first things that I want to start thinking about. Where do I want to deploy? What are the terrain features and the benefits that are there for me? Or I want to deny my opponent. And often when I'm going for that roll off to see who gets to pick which side, that's one of the first decision points because it's going to be important for me on where I deploy my army and how I deploy my army. So when you want to take advantage of the mysterious terrain rules, you're gonna to have to be within one inch of it. So let's say the terrain feature that we've rolled up here is an, a piece of arcane terrain. And you can see on the screen here that the unit of free guild guard are positioned within one inch of the terrain feature. And depending on what that benefit would be, they would receive it. Unfortunately, arcane is only gonna help wizards. So my wizard, my battle mage there is actually outside of one, one inch of the terrain feature. So the wizard is not gonna gain the benefit to casting, dispelling and unbinding until it moves within range of the terrain feature. And each piece of terrain on the battlefield, with the exception of faction terrain, is going to roll against that mysterious terrain table prior to sides being chosen. When I look at a battlefield and the associated rules, it will influence which side of the board that I want to set up when I'm going for priority. Now, there is no clear winner on which of the six is going to benefit every army, but rather depending on what units you have in your army, uh, depending on how it's laid out on the battlefield, will depend on which side that you're going to hopefully go for. And there are six rules that we'll go through in this video. There is Damned, Arcane, Inspiring, Deadly, Mystical, and Sinister. So let's look at each of these and start looking at not only what are they, but how could you potentially leverage these rules. So damned terrain, in your hero phase, you pick one friendly unit within one inch of the damned terrain. It's going to suffer D3 mortal wounds. However, you can get to add plus one to hit to the attack rolls made by that, that unit until the next hero phase. So why I love this one is it's great for monsters who are at full health. And even if they take the, the D3 and let's say they took the maximum of three mortal wounds, it would likely still keep them at the top of their damage profile. So it's not going to degrade. You might remember or recall on a war scroll, they do degrade over time. So depending on which monster and how many wounds it takes to degrade, something you might want to look into, it might degrade at two wounds. The plus one to hit means that I might not need to apply all that attack on this uh, monster to improve its combat profile. It might mean I can put all that attack somewhere else or... If there is an enemy with a minus one to hit, let's say there's an aura or maybe uh, the goblin netters, for example, they cause a minus one to hit when you're in combat. It means that I could have a plus two using all out attack as well as damned to counter their minus one to hit. So I'd still be going into combat with a plus one to hit overall modifier. You can attempt to take the D3 mortal wounds and then save against it using a ward save if you have a mortal wound save. And sh depending on the order sequence, you could then take the damage and then attempt to heal it up. So if you have any healing in your army, um, you may be able to heal back those D3 mortal wounds through a healing mechanic. So let's say Alariel, for example, she heals. There's a lot of healing in the game uh, depending on what armies you're running. So might be a consideration. Take the damage, then heal 
you've walked away still with the plus one to hit. Arcane Terrain adds plus one to casting, dispelling, and unbinding rolls for models while they're within one inch of the terrain feature. So this is going to be great to improving your casting chances and getting that important spell off. It's going to help you unbind and it's going to help you stop your opponent's spells from being cast. It's going to help you dispel and remove those endless spells that are either punishing you, causing you damage or debuffs, or it's going to help stop your opponent from getting those endless spells that are boosting their army. That first bullet point up there is an interesting one. It says benefiting mostly wizards, not priests, with one exception. So if you have a wizard and um, you want to improve your spell casting and your and your dispelling, awesome. You don't have a wizard in your army, but your opponent does. This might be a terrain feature that you want to go for and stop your uh, your enemy from having access to it. However, if you have a priest in your army, priests have the ability to dispel endless spells. So if they sacrifice one of their chants in either yours or your opponent's turn, um, they can actually try to remove an endless spell. No different to the way a wizard would roll 2d6 and try to beat the casting value. So having a priest near arcane terrain could actually still be quite beneficial because in your opponent's hero phase, the only thing a priest can really do is actually dis uh, dispel an endless spell while a wizard can still attempt to unbind um, any future casts that are about to happen. So keep that in mind if you've got a priest in your force. Inspiring Terrain gives you plus one to the bravery characteristic of units while they're wholly within one inch of the terrain feature. Recognize wholly. So it probably is going to mean that you're the unit that you want to get the plus one to their bravery. You can't just tag it with one model to the side like the Free Guild example. They're going to have to be really within the terrain feature. This is going to be great for helping you reduce the impacts of Battle Shock, especially for those, um, those models that might have multiple wounds. It's going to make it harder for your enemy to use any of their bravery based attacks. There are some things, especially in Death, where you might do mortal wounds when you roll some dice against the bravery and you know the difference between the dice roll and the bravery um, would actually cause x amount of damage again great it actually might even help you might just be enough that plus one might just be enough not to actually have to take a battle shock test altogether because the dice roll um, would not exceed the bravery so Again, a nice to have, uh, maybe not something you'd want to have uh, as like your number one piece of terrain, but it's still a really handy one to have. So with Deadly, each time a unit sets up or finishes a normal move, a run, a retreat, or a charge within one inch of this terrain feature, you roll a dice. And a roll of a one on that dice roll um, is going to suffer D3 mortal wound. So it's a one in six chance. I think it's what, what 16 or 17% uh, likelihood that you'll take damage. And it could only be one mortal wound. And it's an interesting one, right? Because it is both set up a finish move of a, a normal move, a run, a retreat, or a charge. So basically all types of movement is going to capture this one. So you could, uh, should an objective be on the piece of terrain that's deadly, you could move on to the objective. If you've got any some type of healing or things like rally, you could then sit on top of that terrain feature and not move again and actually use it as a deterrent for your opponent, um, especially if you do have some type of leader he healing or some type of thing like uh, Emerald Life Swarm. But otherwise, it could only just be one mortal wound. So it, it could be one mortal wound or three mortal wounds on a one in six chance. So it's not something that's going to be hugely concerning, but do keep that in mind. It could be three mortal wounds that uh, could lose you an objective. Um, I like to use deadly terrain as well defensively. So um, I could use a unit within or near a piece of deadly terrain. And then if my opponent uh, tries to charge them, especially if I've got other other defensive benefits that I could apply on the deadly terrain, um, it could really help me save the bacon of a unit. So uh, you could use it defensively against your opponent. Mystical adds plus one to the chanting and management roles for models that are within one inch of the terrain feature. In addition, that model will gain a six plus ward save while they're within one inch of the terrain feature. So if you're not a, a priest, you can still gain the six plus ward save in addition to cover. So you can gain cover for a plus one armor save, which is going to be awesome. But 
with a priest, your priest is going to get a plus one to the chanting. So that's their version of the spell cast. And then the banishment roll, which is the their version of the dispelling of an invocation. An invocation being the priest version of an endless spell. I hope you're not confused there. But, you know, if I've got a priest in my army, I definitely want to get mystical. If my opponent has a priest and I do so my opponent has a priest and I don't, then I want to deny that from them to stop them from getting their chance off because it makes chance a whole lot easier. It won't stop you from taking damage from Divine Wrath. So if you try to cast a, or you try to chant a, uh, a prayer and you roll a one, you will take a mortal wound. However, the, the Divine Wrath is based on an unmodified prayer roll. So even though that plus one would bring you up to two, you still rolled an unmodified roll of a one, so you will still take damage from Divine Wrath. It will help you though, especially when it comes to using Smite. So if you are using the generic Smite, that will give you, uh, it might actually move you from doing one mortal wound to D3 mortal wounds. If you roll a five, because on a roll of a six plus, um, it becomes D3 mortal wounds. So again, that five would turn to six. But overall, the fact that at minimum you get the six up ward save, or you're going to get additional stuff if you've got Priest, um, a really good piece of terrain. And lastly, you've got your Sinister Terrain. So Sinister is going to subtract one from the bravery characteristics from units that are wholly within one inch of a terrain feature with this rule. So if you see your opponent sitting on a piece of Sinister Terrain and you have a bravery-based attack, I think it's the Terror Geist or the Zombie Dragon, for example, it does mortal wounds depending on a bravery-based attack. So if you see your opponent near, near Sinister, this might be a really good opportunity to go and get some additional damage from uh, the, the, that particular unit. However, you know, for me, I try to keep my units away from the, the Sinister Terrain because this might cause one or more extra models to run from uh, a bravery-based attack, whether it's um, uh, whether it's a Battle Shock or what I just mentioned, a bravery-based attack, especially with some of the endless spells as well that might actually cause additional minuses to your bravery. And you can have multiples of, you can get to minus two or minus three on your bravery. So do watch that out. It could actually be good to entice them with a bravery base attack otherwise um, it might actually force you to have to use inspiring presence to keep a unit alive there so for me there's not a lot of benefit unless i am a bravery based attack i've said like a hundred times already um, but not something that i want to i want to take advantage of Mysterious Terrain isn't the only rules that come into play with terrain. Now, I did mention earlier, and I'm not going to go into it in this particular video, but uh, factions like, as I mentioned, the Gloom Spike Gits and many others do come with their own faction terrain that are going to come with army-specific benefits that don't get tied into Mysterious Terrain. However, for the terrain features that are going to be getting Mysterious Terrain, there might be some other benefits you might want to consider. Things like if your units are wholly within a terrain feature, they can get plus one to their armor save from a rule called cover. So if you're looking to be defensive and really boost up your um, your armor save and, and try to hold on to an objective, or uh, you can see your opponent going to quickly rush at you and you want to improve your chances of survival, deploying a unit whole Wholly, not not just in but wholly on the terrain feature will be important some terrain will block line of sight and that means that your opponent couldn't target them from an attack unless they have a rule that ignores line of sight so it means they couldn't be targeted for a spell it couldn't be targeted for shooting great for protecting those small heroes those four wound five wound heroes running around hiding behind line of sight blocking terrain um, just keeping them survivable especially with lookout sir as well if they happen to be near a unit and getting a minus one to hit penalty should should even they have a, a, a ignoring line of sight rule there are some additional rules for garrisoning so things like defensible terrain let's say a, a building for example um, i might be able to depending on what type of building it is actually garrison in it and that would actually give me additional benefits on top of mysterious terrain so really long story short here is there's a lot of exciting ways to use terrain that we can unpack in a future video for me and the armies that i'm building 
things like arcane and mystical are probably the ones that I'm going for the most. Um, they are the, when we are at the tabletop and I see a piece of mysterious or mystical terrain, and I say mysterious because I'm running a lot of priests at the moment in some of my armies, in other armies, really arcane is the number one for me. However, if I was a, a soul black grave lord, I could see myself really using a lot of damn terrain, especially because they have a lot of natural healing in their army. If I was running a lot of um, really cheap bodies or uh, armies that have really low bravery, um, um, and I'm running smaller types of units, inspiring could be really helpful, especially if it's nearer an objective. I could defend an objective and gain cover and gain plus one to my uh, my bravery. So let me know how you look at terrain. Is there any things that you go for the first when you see it on the terrain feature? Are there things you try to avoid? I mean, I talked a lot about sinister and deadly. I kind of try to avoid them like the plague, but do you go for them? Is there something that you you really go for, especially for those armies that have like bravery 10? If you got bravery 10, a minus one penalty of bravery is a whole lot of nothing. I seem to run a lot of bravery five, bravery six, bravery four types armies. So for me, I try to run away from them. I don't really like them. But hey, let me know where you're at, what you're thinking, and um, maybe share some some ways that you're using deadly and sinister terrain that I haven't spoken about. Or if there are other boosts that you see that I haven't spoken about, again, leave them in the comment section. Let me know. Let's all learn together. Thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you found that video interesting and you walked away with a few new ideas. If you did, I would appreciate it if you hit like on the video as well as left me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. The conversation will continue over on Discord, so link is down below in the episode description if you want to join the Discord and continue the Age of Sigma conversation. I want to give a massive shout out as well to these absolute bloody legends, these champions who have continued to support me through Patreon or YouTube members. That is going directly into supporting the maintenance and the growth of this channel. So thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, roll more sixes.